o... Yo, what's cracking, YouTube? It's me, The Biz. Back again. You already know what it is. Listen, you guys. Got a good one for you today. Fish Room Fever is in the spot. He's backstage. It's what took me a minute. I was backstage talking to him. It's like greeting your old friend, man, with me and him. So once he gets in here, we might forget all about you guys in the chat. <laughs> but seriously, though, I want to thank everybody who came in real quick, real quick, real quick. Give you guys some positive vibes of what's been going on. And I'm going to bring it down low. Okay, I'm going to turn it all the way off. Anyway, uh, so Fish Room Fever was the first one in here. And I asked him where he was at. And I was like, why aren't you backstage with me? And he was like, where's the link? And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't even send it, G. <laughs> it's crazy. I'm waiting on him. He's waiting on me. We're just waiting on each other. This is how it's going. That's, that's the type of evening you're about to have, people. It's the type of evening. Texas Fish Room first went in here. Good evening, y'all. Vibes Aquatics. Great to see you. Um, Dennis Christian. Hello, hello to all. Thank you for coming through. Mains Tains first. Fins, that is Jess. Every time I, and I know, I know she hears this all the time. Every time I start saying Mains, I don't say tails. I say Mains Tains. Because I always say I'm maintaining, but mains, tails, fern, fins. Oh, it's my guy was cracking with the spelling of the actual cracking on some um, Davy Jones, Pirates of the Caribbean. And even long before that, the, the 18 foot squid, 2018 foot, 250 foot, whatever it was. Hopefully it's gone. <laughs> What's up, Big Mike? New local Austin, my new favorite friend. Collaborations and curiosities. Thank you for coming through. J Rock does stuff. Thank you for coming through. And I appreciate you looking at the turkey vid, man, and giving me that feedback. I love that. RB, always, always nothing but love for RB. Geek Boy, Diego, Thunder Aquatics. What's going on, Daniel? Thunder Aquatics, you guys. I, this is the guy I bumped into um, at the show in Dallas. Just kept bumping into him, and he was a fan and a very cool cat under Thunder Aquatics. Check that out. Kenny E, fun guy to hang out with. He was in St. Louis for the ACA, and that was a great time. Hey, Lisa. Hi. Tell John to finish my video. Ahora. <laughs> Yellowstone Aquatics, thanks for coming through. Liquid Zoo, I appreciate you. John McKenzie, I appreciate you. Only Oscars, thanks for coming through. And Reyes Aquatics, thank you for coming through. I'm going down to the comments here. Mike's Aquatics, My Fish Tanks AQ503. Shanna, you already know what's up. All right, thank you for coming through. And Fish Kid 61 to end the chat. Thank you guys for coming through. I really appreciate it, man. Um, I'm off for the whole week. I delivered turkeys on Friday, had Saturday, Sunday, and the district, just like a lot of districts here in St. Louis, said that, listen, Ryko, I see you, um, said, yo, teachers and students, it's super stressful for you guys. Um, instead of just giving you uh, Thursday and Friday off for uh, Thanksgiving, we're going to give you guys the whole week, and you don't have to pay it back in the summer. Normally, when you have to pay it back in the summer, you got to stay extra days, kind of like snow days. So the way snow days work is they allot like four or five days for snow. If you go over those days, you got to spend that time over in the summer. No one wants to do that. Once summertime hits, people are trying to get up out of there. <clears throat> Except for teachers who teach summer school and I teach summer school every year. Cause it's a little extra dough in your pocket for just a month, uh, about a month and a week worth of work. So like my thing about summer school is this is fun because I tell the students the first, like the first two days of school, I just let the students, I say, listen, 
all you guys aren't going to be able to pass this class this year. Just flat out, I don't care how smart you are, whatever the case may be, everybody can't pass. And they were like, what, what are you talking about? And I'm like, because some of you guys have got to stay for summer school. Because if you don't stay, I don't get paid again. So, like, look, I'm trying to double dip <laughs> so you all can't make it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Who is it going to be that's going to be with me in summer school? And then I start pointing at random kids. Is it going to be you? 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 And they'd be like, uh-uh, it ain't going to be me. Kind of get them, you know, geared up at the beginning to start getting your work turned in or see me in summer school. But <clears throat> anyway, um, for those of you guys that were donators, I hope that you looked at the very end of my turkey video. I put a happy Thanksgiving um, background on and I just kind of faded everybody's name in and out. I had an applause at the beginning saying thanks for the uh, donations to all of these people. Um, and it was quite a few of you guys. And I can't thank you enough. And it was freaking awesome. And if you could see the line of cars that were out there, I was even able to get some to, to um, people just kind of pulled up and just was like, oh, my God, this is so awesome. Is there any way that I can get one? Yes, you can get a bird. Yes, and you can get a bird. And for those families that I've already said can get a bird, they got a bird, man. Like it was freaking crazy. And I appreciate you guys for making that happen. Um, over 50, we sent them out. No, that's pigeons. Gobble out. We just flew, flew those birds. You feel me? It was, it was, it was, it was cool. Like a couple of my students. They, they were leaving out of the school and they saw it going on. A couple of them helped give give some turkeys to some families and some, um, and, you know, some cars. And then I like had a kid who was like, man, Mr. you're my, like my favorite teacher, man. I remember I had you when I was a freshman, man. Now you out here giving birth to the community and I'm a senior. You'll be the only reason I come back here just to say hi to you. And you could kind of hear him say that on the uh, on the uh, you hear him in the background because I didn't want to, you know, get his face because. Uh, and, and then I think he had used maybe like some curse words, but he used them positively. So I don't know if I should have scold him for that just for the cursing itself. But you kind of just said, man, Mr. Clark, I'm with you. And I was like, I rock with you too, bro. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. It's, it's positive. <laughs> so. Um, if you haven't checked that out, definitely go check that out. It's, uh, it's called Thanks for Giving a Turkey Story. Um, basically me walking through the, uh, through the aisles of, um, of the stores and, uh, switching outfits to go get two more birds. And it just, it was a good time, man. It was a good time. It just, and for me to get rid of them all that last turkey, my student was there and she didn't. She, she knew she needed one and she had told me earlier and um, earlier that week. And I said, I'll have a turkey for you and your, and your folks. So she's like gripping that poor turkey for dear life because it was people kind of honking and they were kind of trying to get my attention. And I was like, it's the last one. It's, that's when I said this butterball is for my little butterball. She, she always is. She's a good kid. And she um. Um, she was just waiting on her mom to come through and her mom was a little late because I couldn't send the kids with turkeys on the bus and she was getting picked up. And so um, we were able to get that that one to her and her folks. So it was it was it was good. Bartholomew made an appearance. You know, I just came up. Yeah, man, this is Bartholomew from Buffalo. <laughs> oh, my bad. Fish room fever wants to come in. Um. So, yeah, enough about me. I hope everybody had a great Monday for those of you at work. I've been in my jammies all day. Look at these jammies. I got the jammies on. Here's last year's jammies. I got to get some of these this year's jammies. <clears throat> anyway, I just feel good that I was in my jammies all day. It feels awesome. All right. The man that needs no introduction. Fish room fever. He's backstage. I'm going to give him the thumbs up if he wants to come in. He's giving me the thumbs up. 
Oh, yeah. Hold on. Before I let them in, you guys, look. No, I'm just kidding. No, no, for real, though. But for real, this is for real. No, nah, I'm just going to let them in. <laughs> What's going on, Biz? What's cracking? What's cracking? Man, I, I'm backstage knocking like, hey, let me in there. <laughs> but no, I, I do want to say, first off, that I think it was really awesome what you did with the turkeys and helping out with the community and the families. Appreciate you know, fl flip side to fail on our kids so you can get paid that extra coin. But, you know. <laughs> It is a just a tactic I use at the beginning since I don't, they don't know me. I don't know them. I just let them know that that way they stay on their P's and Q's. Hey, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, man. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for that. Oh, thank you for what you did, man. It was, you know, <laughs> it's wild, man, because you go back to the, the, the high school that you grew up in and I'm old. I came out in 1998. You know, that was when I graduated and things were a lot different back then. And some of the problems that these kids are experiencing now, we also had, but did not know how to, we didn't have any, any counselors that knew about, you know, it wasn't a big thing for mental health, especially in right. predominantly, predominantly black areas and, and, and school systems. And if it was just, you know, you just would have, these issues and they would just have to deal with them. And, um, and when you go back and knowing a little bit more about it, you're like, man, this is not the school that I left, but with these, with the kids now, there's a different affinity for stuff. So they have an affinity for their games and TikTok and yeah. YouTube and stuff like that. And I mean, we've had we had our same vices, you know, Nintendo, Super Nintendo. We love the game, oh, yeah. stuff like that. Um, but it was just a different. Also, when it came to the school that you were in, like if you really enjoyed your high school and your high school time, you know, that school was a big thing. Like, you know, I go to I go to U City High, and I'm a lion, and hear me roar, and, and you know, you represent the mascot, and if you play. And you never really think about the kids that don't really have that good of a time in high school. Of course, they don't want to go back. But right. these kids kind of lose it. You don't see the the camaraderie of, you know, the, the high school. And I talked to my um, some of my uh, classmates or parents of the students that they sent to their old high school. And I was like, I know your mom and I know your dad and I know <laughs> your uncle. And I call them and I talk to them. I was like, these kids have no love for the U. And I'm like, what yeah. is up with that? And it's like, they just not interested in it, man. They, these kids, you know, they want to get home and jump on the game or whatever else. So it's, but seeing them get excited about that and, and wanting to help out and, you know, calling their parents and saying, mom, um, if you need a turkey, then Mr. Clark got a turkey and um, he's, he's going to do it. And, ooh, and I was like, you know, that, that, that just really felt good. Absolutely. Well, you know, I saw a, um, a survey and it was, you know, the whole, and you're familiar with this being a teacher, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? And uh, on that survey, it said more kids now are picking either YouTuber or TikTok or whatever social media figure over astronaut, which used to kind of always be the, the thing. Uh, so it's definitely a, a mental shift in this generation that's up and coming. So it'll be interesting to see uh, where these kids land, you know, in the future. Yeah, definitely big, man. But enough about me, man. We are here for the fish room and the fever. Well, What's it's, up? it's an honor to be on here. It is because uh, I remember back in the day uh, when I first started up the fish room fever channel, um, you know, watching your stuff, uh, you know, getting acquainted with with the biz. Um, <laughs> you know, hey, man, let me get one of them towels. And I honestly, I don't even remember the lyrics, but you did. So you're like, man, give me some dope lyrics and I'll get you a towel <laughs> and, and I'll get you some lyrics. And you were like, all right, man, you get the towel. And so we had fun for what a year and a half, two years, just going back and forth over the, Hey, where's my town? Oh, man, you get it. You get it. Calm down. <laughs> um, but I do have to let everybody know that I did get my fishy biz towel. So, you know, got to love that. <laughs> after all these years <laughs> yeah no it's it's been a fun back and forth uh and it's an honor to be here and it's great to see so many familiar faces to see the fish fam in here it's awesome i love you guys thank you all for being here man that's awesome man so 
Yeah, it, it was a, it was a ride because we just figured out backstage that I was just on seven months before you. Yeah, uh, I want to say maybe shorter than that, but you did Fish Room Fever and brought the channel out in September, and I jumped on in January with actually this tank behind me that had all kinds of freaking fish in it, and I just had a polo hat and I was rapping with a black hat on and all of that, <laughs> and. And then when I did the dope lyrics, matter of fact, Melvin Reef came up with some dope lyrics too. But yeah, yeah. man, you you guys you guys really topped it off because it was like intro time. So yeah, I do remember that. That was a good time. <laughs> Absolutely. I tell you what, it's go ahead. Oh, sorry, go, I was just gonna say this um, this new series that you're a part of and I'm a part of, and I think is uh, has been a real blessing. The simple fish keeping. Um, it's great to see that come out of the works. You know, it, Absolutely. John. John and uh, Jason, KG Tropicals and Primetime Aquatics, they kind of spearheaded this whole thing and then brought in people like us. And it's it's not only nice from, of course, the standpoint of getting all this information into one spot for fish keepers to be able to look at uh, and having it somewhat you know, spotlighted by having all these older channels involved in it. Uh, but also that they're, you know, incorporating you and me and, and other people, and they're not just keeping it the headliner, so to speak. Um, and then we're able to to do the same, you know, because I'm here to help people. You're here to help people. And I think it's a great way to help people. So I'm really excited about the Simple Fish Keeping series. Hey, listen, you guys, whenever you get a chance, jump on to KG Tropicals and you can jump on the Primetime Aquatics, of course, after the hotspot. But check out that series, um, Simple Fish Keeping. Um, it's amazing. You got 12 tubers all the way from John and Jason status, MD tank status, um, down to my little status. And, and we got mm -hmm. Harry from science gal aquatics and we got fish room fever in there. And, um, it's like almost a green light. And, and what you get to do is you get to see questions being answered from different levels. Yep. Of fish keepers, and um, and I think the I think the beautiful part about it is is that everything can be similar, but still so very different. That's with, exactly it. Yeah, with, you know, just different experiences and and, and and so many fish that maybe to try or haven't tried or have tried and and had two different success stories or two different failure stories. Like it, it's 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 amazing. Well, and it, it kind of brings me back to something that I used to think was just kind of a curse, but now I see it as a blessing and a curse. And that's the fact that the only thing fish keepers can really agree on is that the water goes in the tank. But on the positive side of that, what you can take away from it is we all have our own perspectives and experiences that we can share regarding the same thing. And I think that's a lot of what you're seeing, like, like you talked about. Uh, you know, we can all talk about the same thing and give you a similar answer, but have our own little pieces of experience or pieces of knowledge that we can also bring to the table um, that might help somebody that's in a similar situation to you versus me, or, you know, is more along the lines of John's fish keeping or Jason. So it's, it's really nice. No, oh, yeah, it's definitely don't I mean when I watched it, I was thinking like, I saw everybody's kind of like, um, like their answer that they gave. Mm -hmm. And then I looked at my answer that I gave and mine comes from just like a, straight up point of view just like i am like i just flat out was like there it is <laughs> well, I, I gotta say i loved on uh jason's on primetime aquatics his uh tank size video you went with the 40 breeder also which is what i did of course um and we both had very similar responses not only in the fact that we picked the same tank size but we also had very similar wording so i thought it was kind of funny and then he put us back to back in the video and i was like you know, Biz and I are like right on the same page on this thing, man. We both popped in on the dimensions and what's good about it. And yeah. I just got a kick out of that. Yeah, big sex, so. man. Yeah, that was, it was, like I said, I, I think it's going to be revolutionary. I hope it does what they think it's going to do. And um, <clears throat> I'll be I'll be putting one out hopefully next in the next couple of days if everybody gets their stuff into me. I've got some people I want to throw in there also. So absolutely uh, same thing. <laughs> and um, I'm going I'm to ask you on the spot that I'm, I'm going to need a uh, answer from you also. 
some answers. You get, you'll have to have your people call my people. No, yeah. Matt, you know, you know, I'm glad to do it. I'm glad to do it. I, I've got some people I'm bringing in on mine as well. Okay. Uh, I noticed some comments on, uh, I forget if it was John or Jason's, but one was like, well, where's where LRB and Peck Tech? And I'm like, well, they're going to be on mine. So you'll see them being a part of the series, um, at least in terms of giving answers for some of the questions. I can't speak to whether or not they'll actually join in creating this, you know, on their channel for the series. But sure. Uh, I think that's going to be the fun part as well is seeing everybody bring in their own different mix of people. I know you've got some awesome people and I won't disclose the names you gave me. Um, I've got some people I'm bringing into it on top of that, like Rico Stan, of course, Chattanooga Ed, uh, the Fish Room Fever family, if you will. Yeah. Uh, and I intend to include a lot of others. And it's it's one of those things. If I didn't ask you to be in the first couple of them, that's because I'm holding back some good people for the rest of them. I don't want to hit the gate and come out 20 people hard in one video or the first three that I've got people filming for and then be like, well, I just ask everybody that I know is willing to do it. So now who wants to come back again? So Straight up, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you'll, you'll be getting some some messages from me in the future. A lot of the creators that are in here and I'm looking forward to collaborating on that. I'm definitely down for it. I'm definitely down for it. Danny Weshi, I, he he's already sent over something. Um, I went to Australia and brought somebody from down under. He's he sent some stuff. So we just get nice. a lot of different different takes on it. It's gonna be it's gonna be super fun. <laughs> We've got Vibes Aquatics wants to know how to get one of these fishy biz aquatics towels. Oh, Vibes is gonna take a year. A year and a half. <laughs> You've got to go to you got to go to three aqua shellas in one year to be able to do it. And then you got to present these kind of like your ticket. And then you got to drive around the country and try and catch up with the man. You never know where he's going to be. He might fly into town and then hit a theme park, you know, so. Oh, my God. Vibes, just um, Gmail me at fishybizaquatics at Gmail. And uh, we'll get you right. I have a website, but I believe it's still under construction. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm not even going to talk, talk about websites. Um, fortunately, I've got some people who are going to get help and get my stuff back on track. It kind of got bailed on um, and, and no hard feelings. You know, people step into things and then people can't do them anymore. And I, personally, it's on me because I didn't step back up to the plate. But I had never seen Finn Wiggles. I had to I had to jump that in there. Oh, hey, how's it going, Finn? Good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's part of the Fish Room Fever family right there. Right on, right on. And Lady Diane called. I called her. She had some things that she was going to give Biz, and I didn't get a chance to get back to you, Lady D. I promise I will hit you up tomorrow. I got babies, and then I got I got work, and I had turkeys, and I was driving, and then. But we will meet up, and we will get that together. I appreciate you, and uh, I will definitely give you a ring. So that is going to happen. Um, what you got new, Fish Room? It's the holiday. Well, let's first before that, it's holiday season. It is. It is. Um, How do you feel about holiday season? Is there anything different that you do for so, holiday You know, for me, honestly, uh, it's a shame, but the holiday season kind of got ruined um, doing retail management for mm. so many years. You know, I was a, a store manager and a regional training manager. And it was all about, you know, get it out, get it sold. You know, you're throwing out Christmas stuff, you know, way early. And it's kind of, it's not what the holidays mean for me, um, you know, without getting religious and whatnot. Um, it's, it's not about that whole sales pitch thing that I, I lived the life of for so many years in retail. Um, so that's kind of put a damper on it. You know, that was part of the reason why I left that scene is because, you know, I always had to work Thanksgiving. That was the given. There, there was no, oh, I'm going to have next year. It's like, no, we're always going to work Thanksgiving. Uh, we were closed on Christmas, thanks good, thank goodness. Um, but it kind of put a bitter taste in my mouth in terms of how people approach the holidays, unfortunately, and the fact that I miss so many of them. Uh, but uh, I do enjoy it. Uh, of course, you know, we, we stream on Thursdays on the Fish Room Fever channel. Um, so we're going to be streaming this Thursday. We never miss... Never miss a show. Sometimes I do a special holiday show just because, um, you know, the family's kind of used to having a condensed holiday, if you will, with me having to work and things, you know, from so many past years. So uh, I always look forward to that. I always have a fun time doing the the holiday shows with the YouTube family. So, yeah, 
that's uh, as I understand. I forgot. Uh, you know what? I worked at Circuit City for maybe a year and a half, a couple of years, and they retail is open because those are your big days. Yep, those are your big days. So I can under, I understand that. Um, I've been so far out of it though that now I enjoy it because you know teaching is you know you get your weekends and you get your holidays and. You see, I feel like you used to get more holidays. Like now, we still go to school like Columbus Day and oh, wow, all you know, kind of other stuff. So, yeah, <laughs> and, and the big thing for me was always trying to get time with the family because uh, I was I was essentially on call, even though I wasn't a nurse. And I used to joke, I'm not a nurse, I shouldn't be on call, but I was on call. If somebody didn't show up, even if it was you know down to just a, a cashier, you know, I had to go in and cover them as a store manager. Um, so there was a lot of family time missed, but now that I'm home with the family all the time, it's like, I don't have to wait for a special occasion. Um, you know, like I could hang out and play video games or whatever with my kids whenever. And because we're homeschooling, I can always, you know, kind of shift around like, all right, that's cool. You know, what? we're going to play this game for another hour and then we'll start up school and we'll just run an hour long with it, you know? So. For Dan and Ken Aquatics with the five dollar chat, LOL, Biz James don't look right with glowfish behind. Them. Hey, th those are my Aquashella glowfish. I love those guys. Uh, those were the ones that were in. Uh, if you went to Aquashella Orlando, which I know you did, um, but when you walked into the Blacklight area, one of the first tanks that they had set up in there was the glowfish tank. And then when they were breaking down, uh, I was still, you know back in the area trying to help people get stuff you know fixed up and whatnot and they said hey do you want these fish if you can come get them out of the tank you can have them um so what? That, that's where those came from um yeah i'm not normally a person that goes and buys glowfish uh, but i i don't have anything against them um i feel like they do help to get some people in the hobby even if it's for quote unquote the wrong reason um but yeah, I love those guys. And I wanted to show that you can do something besides put them in, you know, the, the tank with the glow light and the, the horrible fake plants and all that. Mm -hmm. So I've got them in a 110 gallon community aquarium with, as you can see, angels and a bunch of other fish. It's planted. It's all real plants. Um, and they, they thrive in there, you know, just like they would if they weren't glow fish, if it was just a bunch of Tetris that I bought. So pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. And those are, are those skirt Tetras? Yeah, yeah, those are the skirt Tetras. So um, I've got a whole mix of stuff in that tank. That became um, the catch-all, I guess you could call it, mm -hmm. um, just because it was a, a bunch of different fish that I had in different tanks. And I'm like, you know, these would go good in there. It gives a good variety, a good mix. It maybe wouldn't be something I would recommend for somebody's first tank, but I do a lot of that. You know, there are a lot of things that I do that aren't beginner recommendations, if you will. There's something that comes from being in the hobby for years and years and, sure. you know, getting that that experience with fish. Uh, but, you know, it's it's a fun tank. It's got a lot of different plecos in it as well. Oh my and God. it's it's I mean, it's got a, a green phantom. It's got a sultan. It's got a vampire pleco. Uh, I've got one blue-eyed lemon in there, uh, bushy nose, that I need to get out because I've got a few more, so I'm going to restart that breeding colony. Um, I forget what else is in there. But the great thing is, is you see them all the time. Like, a lot of times those plecos hide, uh, but I see them quite often, and then as soon as I drop food in the tank, they they come right out. There's no shyness to come out and feed when the light's on. I've got the perfect question for my simple fish keeping series that is perfect for that exact tank all right i can't wait i can't wait to, to see the i can't wait to see the answers on it um and speaking of plecos i've got a clown pleco that i mm -hmm. never ever see like when i put them in the tank darted behind the sponge filter i know i did a community tab on this too right <laughs> yeah. i was like can anybody find a ple clown pleco <laughs> like you probably won't. Um, I, I will say I see my clown plecos less than I see my zebra plecos, and people know how shy and timid those things typically are. Um, to the point that one time I drained a tank, and it was just that little bit of water above the gravel line, uh, and I had some some bot botanicals in there. And so one of the 
catapa leaves was laying in there and i went to start picking stuff out and i did that uh, reaction kind of like when you have coolie loaches and you forget about them yeah. you reach your hand in there and something wiggles in your hand you're like oh and you're like oh there's there's another clown pleco in there he was hiding under a, a piece of leaf um so things, was, yeah. uh, you know what and aquafunk told me i was like yeah i'm thinking about I, I said yeah and i got a clown pleco i was telling him all the fish that i got he's like oh man you'll never see it I was like, yeah whatever you'll never see yours i'm gonna always see mine. as soon as i put them in there it did exactly what he said it was just darted and he said the last time he saw his was when he drained his tank similar to your story also i was like man these things they're true to character <laughs> yeah if you want to see your clown plecos uh because at one point i was working with him to try and get some breeding going and i may start that back up one day uh, but basically the setup i had was very minimalistic but it had a bunch of caves in it and all those caves pointed toward the front of the tank or were angled toward the front of the tank mm -hmm. so i could shine a flashlight in there and kind of check on them and that was that's the best time that's i've ever <laughs> yeah i was like oh yeah okay, i can see it whenever i want to now because they're in the caves that are you know set up for viewing purposes what um what other um breeding projects have you had what else have you bred or tried to breed or would you are willing to try breeding in the future so i've done i've done several things over the years of course a lot of live bears inlers and guppies and things like that uh various kinds of plecos i am still uh i guess some of the things i've done first of course would be the different variations of bristlenose plecos uh, i've bred red belly uh, red belly piranha and I'm hoping to and working towards being able to breed Caribe Piranha. Uh, I'm also still working on getting the Snowball Plecos to breed and, of course, growing out the Zebra Plecos so I can get those breeding at some point. Okay. Um, so those are kind of my my main hope. Two projects would be the Snowballs, the Zebras, and the Caribe. Those are the ones that I would really like to get going um, just because they're not... Uh, quite as entry level, I guess, or as basic as doing a bristle nose. Now, I am starting back up uh, just the standard bristle nose plecos breeding, and I'm going to be doing the the blue eyed lemon bristle nose. Uh, and of course, you know the guppies and endlers they breed all the time and, and do their thing. Mm -hmm. So that's it's kind of breeding wise. Um, hopefully, the exodons. I'm looking over here, forgetting I've got the green screen, so y'all can't see this tank over here anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've got the buck tooth tetras, the exodon paradoxes that I got from Lucas. And he had seen them in some of the videos and I'd kind of had my eye on them. And it looked like they were, have been exhibiting some breeding behaviors. Okay. So, uh, but I've got to move this tank actually. Uh, I did a no-no and I knew better than to do it. And I've always made sure not to do it before. Ah, rookie mistake. What happened? So the tank that I've got next to me over here, it's the 75 gallon double stacked, but it's like what you'd see in a fish store with the black sliding doors on the front of it. Um, yeah. And, those sit on a metal stand about four inches off the ground with four metal feet. Mm -hmm. Well, I've always put two by fours underneath those to give it some additional bracing between the feet and the floor. Okay. And the last time I moved it, I was, I was in a hurry, had a lot of stuff going on. I was like, I'll get back to it and I'll, I'll you know, get some two by fours under the feet and rebrace it later. <laughs> yeah. You know how that goes. That's, that's why you're laughing because you know how that goes. So now this tank is sitting about an inch down in the floor um, where it's just, it's just compressing those little bitty metal feet that are, you know, maybe an inch across in diameter, uh, just pushing right into that wood. So I'm going to have to take this system down and move those exodons is why I really got into that. It's because I need to move them and get them set back up and hopefully uh, be able to get that breeding behavior going again. Man, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it happens. You know, it's a, you know, it happens to the best of us. I don't, I don't want to say that I'm the best of us, but, you know, it was a r rookie mistake. Like you said, I know not to do it. I did it anyways. Yeah. yeah. You know, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Look, you said it. Like, right when we think that it's, that we're safe to go in the water. Yeah. <laughs> Jaws. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Hey, Kelly, thank you. It's another donator. Kelly Foreman, I appreciate you. Um, so have you done, um, trips like, um, fishing trips? Do you like enjoy fishing also? So this tanking, I call this tanking as what we're doing. Absolutely. Um, but you know, fishing, do you put a hook, do you put bait on a line, go hook some? 
it has been many years since I have done that. Um, and not for any philosophical or, you know, deep emotional reasons, just simply the fact that, uh, I go all in on my hobbies. So I typically have one primary hobby at a time. Um, you know, whether it's working on my car, whether it's fishing, whether it's tanking, as you put it. And I like that. Uh, but it's been several years. I just don't have fishing poles and things like that. I don't have anything against fishing. I enjoy fishing. I just, one, I don't really have the time. And then of course, with, you know, the pandemic, things got crazy and life was just all out of whack. Um, but also, I really don't have any fishing buddies anymore, if you will. Uh, it's one of those things that I kind of go for the enjoyment and experience of hanging out with other people. Sure. Um, I mean, you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. Just like most hobbies, you know, and most hobbyists, you know, we enjoy the camaraderie while enjoying that hobby that we have. Um, so it's one of those things. Do I want to go sit out, you know, in the middle of the night by myself, you know, and try and catch catfish on a, do on a dock in the dark? Uh, no, not really. But if I got a buddy or two that wants to go out and do it, hey, let's go. I got my poles, you know. Okay, all right. So you're not noodling for catfish? No, uh, it's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the opportunity. Not that I wouldn't, but I don't really have a good spot for that around here, so to speak. Um, you know, I'm, I'm up for giving anything a go. You'll you go know, noodling. I, yeah, I mean, I've noodled piranha, so hey, why not, right? Have you really? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't really. I did get bit that once, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll chalk that up as noodling in the wrong tank, right? Gotcha. <laughs> That's nuts. Yeah. Nuts. Oh, my goodness, man. That's great. Um, Have you decided to maybe try salt? Have you salted before? Have you been a salty tanker? Yeah. Um, so I, at one point, um, had a 220 gallon reef set up. I still have that tank. Um, but that's been well over a decade ago. I do have a little bit of salt going now. Uh, if, if you're familiar with salt water, uh, there's a thing called zoanthids or zoas. Okay. Uh, and there are these really beautiful little polyps and they come in all different colors. I mean, it's amazing the different color variations you can get in those things. And I, I really missed those. So I did get back into salt and we've been doing the simple saltwater series to kind of help people. And uh, so what we did was took myself who's an intermediate in saltwater, Chattanooga Ed, who's never done it before. It is starting up his first tank throughout the series. And then Mike fish tank barn, who is our expert, you know, he breeds saltwater fish. Sure. And what we did was we broke it down into the basics and not just like a, a quick five minute, you know, well, here's what you need to know about saltwater tank sizes. You know, we spent an hour, you know, we did one hour segments. So we did just an hour talking about tank sizes and just an hour talking about water and what you need to know about saltwater and all, all that stuff. Um, and that's why we called it simple saltwater because we set it up um, and I know it wasn't going to do well from the beginning. You know, this is one of those things you put in the library and maybe 10 years from now it's taken off, um, but you've got the entire collection of knowledge. Um so that people can go back and look at it. And somebody that's never touched salt can look at all these different things and be a hundred percent ready to go. Um, because we're trying to kind of cross that bridge. You know, there's a big divide between salt and fresh water and it's getting better. Uh, but there's always been, yeah, the fire right there. I love it. <laughs> um, it. It's one of those things. There's always been a big divide and a lot of it comes more from the salt side of um, them not wanting to entertain freshwater people, if you will. So that's, that's another reason that I wanted to kind of incorporate that on the channel is to give a friendly and gentle, gentle introduction into salt water without the, the snobbiness and the greater than thou, better than thou viewpoint that you get a lot of times from some of the salt water people. I'll tell you what, um, last week I had Queen of Reef on um, mm -hmm. and she's fully salty, but she was kind of on the same tip except coming from the salty side and she was kind of in agreement with some of our salty people feeling kind of that way fresh water, but she's like totally against it. She's all about the unified yep. and um, would be worth probably, you know, taking it all in. She's kept a fresh water tank for at least like six months. She felt how she felt about it. She was always back with the salt and she's more salt, salt uh, corals over yep. fish. But right. Um, I do think that those two teams need to kind of get together because I mean, at the end of the day, we're all tanking. We're tanking. Yeah, we're, 
you know, we're, we're all fish keepers. Yeah. We're keeping exactly. Um, and there are a lot of things, uh, I won't go off on this tangent too deep, uh, but there are a lot of things I think freshwater fish keepers maybe don't understand about, um, the ocean environment because they're not in that side of the hobby. So in terms of like coral losses and what's happening with the world's reefs and sure. um, just the general status of the ocean and not that all saltwater fish keepers do. Um, but I think they're a lot more in touch with it because they deal with those things. They, you know, they look and they go, Oh my God, the price of this coral has jumped. What happened? Well, you know, we've lost X amount of it and now you can't really get it. And so, uh, yellow tangs is one of those things you could get a yellow tang for I think like 50 60 bucks you know back in the day and now there's several hundreds of dollars from what i'm hearing uh because of you know issues with being able to get them in um so uh, that's another aspect of it for me and uh, that, that's as deep as i'll go but uh it does kind of you know if we could get more people to look at you know, kind of like we do with project piaba and you know understanding you know what's going on in the amazon where a lot of our freshwater fish are coming from. I think that would be the flip to it. You know, maybe a lot of people that are strictly saltwater don't know what's going on in South America, Central America, and places like that where a lot of freshwater fish come from. Sure. So there, there's always a chance to expand your knowledge um, and get back to that tank method, uh, as I call it, that time acquiring new knowledge. Um, and that's something I think, regardless of what side of the hobby you're in, we all should be doing. I like that. I like that. That's awesome, man. Thank you. And, um, <clears throat> would love to hear more about your intellectual banter, but <laughs> it's that time right now. <laughs> Ooh, here we go. The flame is on. It's the hot. <laughs> we are about to put fish room fever in the hot spot. Uh, oh. See if that fever still runs high. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Fish room fever. Are you ready? I am ready. I heard that. Um, I like that. There you go, Vibes. You said it. It's the hot spot where the spot gets hot. And we have fish room fever. And look, fish room fever and fishy biz aquatics is going to be a crazy one. So Absolutely. A lot of streams on Monday night. And this is going to be your favorite one. And guess what? I'm not going to play with them. So here we go. <laughs> this is nothing but your faves. Nothing but your faves. All right. You know the answer to these questions because they're your favorites. This is this is all righty. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> favorite fish. My favorite fish that I have or just overall, just just, your favorite. just favorite. OK, my favorite fish. Um, it's going to have to be my zebra plecos. You know, the, uh, that was a dream fish for me for a long, long time. So my zebra plecos, the LO46s. <laughs> I have to stop right there. Zebra plecos, L46? Yeah, L46, L046, depending upon who wants to list it out. Yeah. When I had new local Austin in the hot spot, I said, it looks like it's that time. And he was like, what, 945? And I, was, and I threw him <laughs> in the hot spot. He was like, wait, what? <laughs> Oh, man. I love it. Love it. All right. Favorite fish, Zebra Preco. Uh, Pleco. Um, what are two fish that are friends? Two fish that are friends. Um, any two that I put in the same tank. Is that how it is? Yeah, that's how it is. <laughs> no, um, I, I think two fish that are very commonly friends would be in your community tank. So, you know, a couple different kinds of tetras, but I mean, different things, you know, just behind me, you know, those angel fish and those tetra are of friends, you know, those angel fish could definitely dominate those tetras uh, if they wanted to, but they don't, they don't have a need to, they all hang out and peacefully live, coexist. Okay. It's all good till it's not. Yeah. <laughs> those angels still are cichlids. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, they, they are not angels as anybody that keeps angel fish will let you know. Yeah. I just acquired four angels. Look at those little guys. Very nice. My first time keeping angels, I couldn't figure out what the whole hubbub was. I thought it was for ladies, and especially when Aquaphone said he is the angel keeper, I definitely thought they were for ladies after that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> man, going back to the she shed, man. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, not, 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 that's not against any ladies. I was just messing no. around. Let's get back to it. Favorite sub, substrate. It's actually going to be pool filter sand. Is uh, that's it? gonna that's gonna surprise some people, but yes. Wow. I, I think um, it's one of those things that it lets you know just how dirty your tank is very visibly and very quickly. So it, it not only is it great for you know capping things, which I've capped not just of course dirty tanks, but also I've capped uh, gravel tanks, you know, uh, with sand. And it shows you when your tank gets dirty, when there's, you know, biological buildup on there, you know it, and you know it quick. Um, so I think that it's a good learning sub substrate uh, as well as a good in use practical substrate. And I like it in place of bare bottom. Bare bottom used to be one of my favorite substrates, but I've found that just putting a little bit of sand where I would like to do a bare bottom um, kind of brings the tank to life a little bit more uh, while keeping it minimalistic in terms of places for things to build up very good yes Atkins to your question of course I did and your favorite place to buy fish my favorite place to buy fish this is going to be a shout out to my local fish store aquatic marine um, anybody that knows me knows I love those guys uh, that's who I'm uh, in partnership with if you will for the Aquaticon event here in Knoxville I'll fix my camera a little bit mm -hmm. um, but I mean, that's the place to go for me. It's, it's a couple of minutes away. They've got an awesome selection, awesome customer service, awesome prices. Um, they've been really supportive of me and I, you know, support them hundred percent. So. Awesome. I would ask you your favorite bottom feeder, but I'm pretty sure it's an L Pleco L something. Yeah, it, <laughs> it, it would be, it would be Plecos. I guess technically though, technically I, I could throw you off here uh, and go with Neocaridina shrimp. Um, I do love the shrimp. Um, I think they're one of the those underrated things in the hobby for a lot of people. Uh, but as somebody that does enjoy spending time, you know, up at the tank watching what's going on versus, you know, some people have a fish tank and they go, oh, I have fish tank. I throw food in there and I walk past it and it's pretty for 30 seconds out of my day when I look at it. Uh, but when you get to actually watching shrimp and you see the little intricacies and, deli you know, just that that macro world, if you will. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. Lady Diane is going to let me try shrimp for, with her, some of her shrimp. I believe she was going awesome. to get shrimps and guppies. And I was like, well, we'll see how, we'll see how this works out for the biz. Well, there you go. <laughs> favorite, <laughs> I think you'll enjoy it. Favorite filtration. Sponge filters. Um, for a lot of reasons, uh, and, and not necessarily any particular brand, but sponge filters in general. Uh, especially as you're moving into multiple aquariums or, you know, catching fish room fever, uh, you get to 20, 30, 90 tanks and you're trying to plug in all of these different hang on backs and, you know, you run out of outlets quick uh, and then you're buying filter cartridges unless you've hot rotted all these things. So then you're buying sponge anyways for all these hang on backs to replace filter cartridges. Uh, with a linear air system, and that's one of the big things that I love about sponge filters is I have pretty much at this point i technically don't but i could have all of my tanks on the same pump on that linear air pump um and then it's just one plug and that's also nice in case of an emergency your power goes out or something i can plug that into a power inverter or a generator or backup power supply and i'm still aerating and filtering all of my tanks even with power out so no okay i'm with it give me two fish that are imminent or enemies Oh, two fish that are enemies. Um, I would have to say uh, the Viejas and Spillum and the Green Terror. Mm, go at each other pretty good, huh? Yeah, um, that, uh, I've, I've had both of those fish. Oh, no. They are, they are. And I've been able to work with them and other fish many times in different tanks, but I had two that they just, they would not, would not be friends. Like, I've got the green terror in here right now. He's in here with some African cichlids and some uh, ornate bichers, some ornata pinnis. Mm -hmm. And they what do fine. What is that with that ornate bicher in it? Uh, it's 125. It's the, the your standard six foot tank. The smallest bicher I could probably get is a, is a Sen is it Senegal? The Senegal, yeah. The, the Senegal, there's Senegalis, yeah. What, what size tank do you recommend? Um, 
so they grow a little bit slower than the ornates. So you've got uh, a little bit more time to upsize. And, and this is speaking to you uh, because you're somebody that I know would upgrade a tank. Sure. So do, if you get a smaller one, you could start out in a smaller tank and move up. I mean, I really honestly wouldn't go anything below a 75 in terms of a lifetime tank just because mine are fairly active. Uh, I know some people's that aren't. Uh, mm -hmm. My ornates are not very active except at night. They sit in the same spot all day long okay. um, but when they get up you know being nocturnal and they go hunting they're all over the tank yeah um, i have a 75 filled with my african cichlids and i was wondering if i could do a cinnabol or two to kind of round it out my only thing would be to keep an eye on the africans uh, you know their personalities you know individually sure. better than i do of course because they're your fish uh, the Senegals I have found to be not very aggressive um, and could definitely get tore up by a group of Africans if they upset them. Wow. Really? Um, so that, that would be my, okay. my personal experience would be to just make sure that the Senegals are safe in there, um, especially with Africans oftentimes being so territorial, yeah. um, particularly when you add new fish. Mm -hmm. um, that if you add an ornate in there, especially if you get one that's, you know, the standard size you see them is maybe three or four inches. Mm -hmm. um, you throw that little three or four inch noodle in there and yep. these Africans go up. Oh, nope. That's a fat worm. I'm, he's done. I got you. So I got you. Okay. All right. Good to know. Yeah, definitely could be done. Um, it just depending on size and behavior. But as size wise, that's the only one that I would be able to do. I can't do an ornate. I can't do a dino. Um, I mean, uh, um, What's the other one? What's the big boy? So they've got, uh, oh Lord, uh, this is the Delhizi, Delhizi, the banded one. Um, I've got one of those. Those tend to get fatter versus longer, uh, whereas the ornates, they get long and fairly thick. Uh, so my ornates, I bought them after I bought my Senegals and at a smaller size. And I, I'm looking this way because they're in this tank that's over to my right. So I'm just kind of kind of watching them while I'm talking. I'm bad about that, but um, I bought them in a smaller size. And after I had the Senegals and they've out you know, they've outgrown them. They're 11 to 13 inches. I've got three of them in there. So they grow a lot quicker and they get a bit bigger. Um, so that's just something to keep yeah. in mind. Gotcha. All right. Let's jump into it. You already know what we're going to. Let's do this. Sorry, you guys had to take a pause. I had to get some information. Who better to get information from but someone who is already experienced and has the stuff that I'm looking for? It happens like that. That's that's the way you're supposed to get it. Yeah. Right. Take notes. All right. Favorite shoe size? 12 and a half wide. Size? That's not the best. <laughs> Favorite shoe ever. <laughs> I guess it's going to be the one that fits me. So a 12 and a half wide is what I'm looking for. You know, I mean, I'll do a 13, but usually they're a little slim. And if I get the wide, it's a little bit big. So no, um, my favorite shoe ever. So I have to say, um, I finally got my first actual pair of Jordans about a year ago. Um, and I love them. They're, they're kind of a, a light blue suede, um, you know, with the white, and uh, I absolutely love them. That's, that's probably my favorite pair of shoes ever. Very nice. So. Very nice. Mine are the Jordan 11s, any color. I prefer the yeah. Concords, which are the black and whites, and I do like the classic breads, which are the red and black. But yeah. Nice, way. nice. Uh, favorite soft drink? <sighs> can I incorporate, uh, can we just go with favorite carbonated beverage? I think. Okay, that, that works. Okay. I don't really drink a lot of soda. Um, let me see if I can show this on the blue screen. Uh, I'm addicted to the, these things, though. And there's a funny story behind them. It's like an energy drink, but not. I'll tell you this. I can't stand Monsters or Red Bulls or any of those type of energy drinks. I just can't do them. Okay. I don't like the taste. They don't sit well with me. I don't like the way they make me feel. Dang, I just uh, this, Bulls before this. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> it, it, do, it, doesn't, it doesn't sit well with my body. It just doesn't. Um, gotcha. these, these right here, it was actually a local... Um, well, it's a company now, but it was a couple of kids at the University of Tennessee uh, that developed this formula. And the very first place I ever saw it was at my local fish store. Uh, this was back when it was under different management in a different location, but it was Aquatic Marine. 
um, that I spoke to earlier. Uh, I walked in and they had this little bitty cooler that held like six cans. And apparently they were warehousing this stuff for the guys that created it in the bank while they were trying to find companies to sell it. Um, I was like, I'll try that. And that's been years and years and years ago. And now the stuff's, you know, all over the place and it's in your pilots and your Weigels and your gas stations, but it's a local startup company. And I love that. And, uh, it, you know, it links back to my local fish store. That's where I found it and first started drinking it. Um, so now uh, let me see, pull it up again. Would I have that here in St. Louis or is it still local? You said it's, um, but I don't know if it's in St. Louis or not. To be honest, anytime I travel out of state, um, I take a case with me. I take 24 of them with me uh, just because I did, uh, you know, kind of like the same thing you do with soft drinks. I did kind of become dependent upon them where you don't drink one, you get cranky, you get a headache, that type of stuff. Sure. Um, so I've cut back. At one point I was drinking like six of them a day and that was, I drink that and I drink water. Um, so now I try and, and limit it, but I always take them with me just because I'm afraid that I'm going to get somewhere that's outside of distribution. But you know, I was doing appliance delivery at the time when they were kind of branching out. So it was neat. I'd go do deliveries all over the state and in other states and be like, oh, you know, they've branched out halfway across the state now. And, you know, now they're available in these places even further out. Um, so I need you to send me some because I want to taste because I'm absolutely Red Bull. And if it tastes better than Red Bull, that's cool. Because I don't typically like I didn't like yeah. original Red Bull, but I put it in my drinks. So that's right. It was, it was all right. But now gotcha. they got pomegranate and peach, which tastes a lot better. Oh, if yeah. That is, if that is the, the deal, I need you to send me one. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm down for it. All right. Favorite dessert? Oh, uh, it's going to be cheesecake. It's cheesecake. I don't get it enough, but, you know, if I had to pick favorite common dessert, it's going to be Little Debbie's. <laughs> <laughs> Lumpy Dog said it looks dangerous. It turned his hair blue. <laughs> it did. It, I mean, you know, my, my logo was actually white when I first made it, and then the blue just leached into that from from my hair and from the drinks and all that. So, very cool. All right, favorite breakfast food. Does it have to be at breakfast time? Because I'm not a fan of eating when I first get up. But my favorite breakfast food, um, ah. I'm going to call it an all-star platter. If I have to pick one food, it's going to be hash browns. But I, I, I like my my variety that I make. Like I have my own thing that I do with, with eggs and do an omelet. And it's got onions and peppers. And, you know, you cook up some sausage and crumble up some bacon on there. And sometimes you get the little smokies and you chop them up and you fry them and yeah. get them in there. Um, I like to do my own creations. I like yeah, to get, yeah. get dangerous with some stuff. I like so. it. I like it. That's my type of that's my type of cooking right there. I like that. I yeah. like that. Now, is that also your favorite food to cook? You know, I think it is. I, I really enjoy doing breakfast because you can throw such a variety on it. My kids love it too. Um, because the in terms of favorite thing to cook, it would definitely be breakfast of some sort. Maybe not necessarily the omelet thing, um, but just I like to mix it up. You know, one day it might be waffles and some eggs and whatever, you know, meat sides. And then you do French toast a different time or, you know, I, I'm one of those people that I've gone in there and spent three hours cooking until I wasn't hungry and you've had everything. It's, Oh, there's biscuits and gravy and there's French toast and waffles and pancakes and sausage and bacon. And, you know, I make hash browns and it's like here family eat. It's like Thanksgiving <laughs> breakfast. I don't know what else to call it. Scuttle bucket is what we call it. Says MNC. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Uh, favorite cereal? Ooh, um, I would have to say probably Honey Bunches of Oats. Very good. Uh, like if you ask me what cereal I wanted right now, that's that's where I'd be like, hey, can you can you hook me up with some of that? Yeah, you know, and, and I'm used to eating kid, kid cereals. You know, having an eight year old and a ten year old, it's it's typically kid cereals in the house. So it's nice to to get away from some of the, the chocolatey cocoa puff type of things, you know. And I can't eat all that. So honey bunches yeah. of oats is great. Even when they came out with the almond ones, uh, even better for me. Yeah, I love the almond. Absolutely. You mean there's something besides almond? No, we ain't we ain't messing with that. Right. Have you ever had honey O's? O H apostrophe S. I have not. I, I'm assuming that's similar to honey nut Cheerios. Uh, better. 
better. So Ooh, better. In, in the actual O, there's the honey nut honey with the honey. It's got like the little chunks kind of on the O the, on the inside. Okay. Okay. Fire. I'm gonna have to get a hold of some of those. Oh, straight that's, that's, fire. That sounds good. <laughs> uh favorite fast food joint. Ooh. Favorite would have to be someplace you've probably never heard of. Okay. It's called Pals, P A L S. Okay. They make the best burger that I have ever had. Fast food, restaurant, excluding my own, of course, you know, because okay. uh, I'm going to do me. But um, they make a burger that is ridiculously good. And they've got these great fries. And basically, um, it's like burning and freezing your mouth at the same time when this thing, they, they cook them fresh. I mean, it's like fresh, like you order it and then they cook it. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. There's no stuff sitting on a, a table. Um, the meat, the seasoning, like I mean, it's like hot off the grill. The cheese is just melting everywhere. Uh, yeah, Ed's been there. Um, that wasn't necessarily the best time I've ever been there, um, but it was still good. It was still good. Um, but then that, like the lettuce and the tomato, it's all like out of the cooler, cold and crisp and almost, you know, so you get that combination of good. just this, the heat and the cool and the, the seasoning they use is addictive. Um, I think that there's something narcotic in it. I'm sold. Next so time I come out Tennessee way. I got to go get, I got to go there. I, I, I try to have a burger and it, you know, wherever people say, wherever they're from, ha if I'm there, have that. I, yeah. I really hate that you guys didn't get the best Whataburger experience when you guys were in Dallas, though. Mm. It, it is what it is. It happens. Yeah, yeah, but because uh, that's a good, that's a good thing. Yeah, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Bob? Yeah, man. Um, yeah. All right, back to it. Favorite wrestler. Ooh, it's been a long time since I thought about wrestlers. Um, you know, growing up. I, I guess it would have been good old big sexy Kevin Nash. I always love Kevin Nash. <laughs> big dude came Nash. out there, yeah, yeah, long haired Kevin Nash. You know, okay. back in the day, um, uh, you know, I had long hair at one point many, many, many years ago. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was when I was growing up. I guess my, my favorite, if you will. Right on. All right, favorite restaurant to sit down and eat in. Are you paying or am I? <laughs> I'm, I'm not paying at all. I'm not paying. I'm in Tennessee now. <laughs> um, let me see. Uh, it would probably be Red Lobster. Um, I know I'm, I'm going to eat the, the seafood and I'm going to go home and look at my pretty fish and feel bad about it. <laughs> um, but yeah, if we're looking at national scale commercial restaurant, it's probably going to be Red Lobster. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm not mad at that. Um, favorite type of music? Ooh, um, so I listen to everything, uh, but the thing I listen to the most is going to be, um, and not not so much the the new stuff, uh, but hip hop and rap. What it was 10, 15, 20 years ago. I mean that that's that's what I grew up on. I um, I, I could show you some pictures that would surprise you <laughs> of me back in the day. Um. And it was all hip hop. Yeah, rap. Afro, that was I didn't have an afro, but I had more. <laughs> I had more chains than Mr. T, except they were silver. I got one picture. It, 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 yeah, uh, you call me Mr. S, but it's like the chains are like this thick. It was just all silver chains. It was. It was you know just just how I grew up, and people you know yeah. get a kick out of that nowadays. But yeah, uh, and it still is. You know, uh, the the main station in my car is is hip hop. Um, though it's a lot of newer stuff and, and that's fine. Um, but I love the, the older hip hop and rap would be my favorite. Love it. What about your favorite group music wise? Ooh. Um, so here's what I'm gonna throw you off. Um, cause my favorite group is not actually going to come out of hip hop and rap. Okay. Um, it's going to go way back. Um, this is me being a youngster calling it way back. It would have to be REO Speedwagon. Um, I used to steal my mom's journey in REO Speedwagon and Chicago uh, stuff yeah. when I was growing up. And she'd be like, has anybody seen my REO Speedwagon? No, mom. <laughs> um, so that that's one of those that 
I've listened to for for many many years, and I still enjoy listening to. You know, it's one of those that it it came and it never left. There's a fruit fly, right there. Um, but yeah, so that would probably be it, but just because it's 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 been consistently you know enjoyed. Dope, 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 dope. Uh, favorite karaoke song to sing. Are we talking about? Like I'm trying to do some legit karaoke, or I've had one too many. We're gonna do some some karaoke. One too many. One too many. Um, I'm gonna go crazy then, because you know me. I'm all about just just, just getting all out there. Um, let's do some Missy Elliott. Okay. Is it worth it? Let me work it. Hey, we out you here. Know, we're, we're, we we getting way out there. I, yeah, I get we crazy. Are. <laughs> so, you know. We're gonna get people shaking butts in this out there. Absolutely, on the that one. I like it. I'm with it. <laughs> um, favorite holiday. Oh, can I cheat on this one? I'm gonna say it's my kids' birthdays. Um, now, if I have to pick a holiday, holiday, it's probably Christmas, but not. For me, Christmas, um, it's because I have kids that I enjoy sure. Christmas with them and kind of trying to pass on what Christmas is really about while giving them, you know, the present and all that experience. And here, here's the, the gifts and the, the fun stuff. And it's the enjoyment that they have is what makes it enjoyable for me. So that's why I'd probably say Christmas. Okay. All right. I'm with it. Favorite app can't be YouTube. Favorite app can't be YouTube. You know, it's going to be TikTok for me. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 so I when I say that, following you on I saw that I followed you back, but I, I, so when I say that I'm taking all of the things that I use as a part of YouTube and I'm excluding them. So like my editing apps and all those things, I'm, I, I'm not counting any of those. Uh, okay. So just as somebody that's using something that's using something, it would be TikTok. I, I get lost on there like everybody else does. That's why it's so popular. It's amazing. Isn't it? It is. It really is. Yeah, my students are like, Mr. Clark, you have a TikTok account? Yeah, don't you? What the hell? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gary uh, V told me to do it. <laughs> go ahead. Listen, go ahead. Oh, I just said Gary V told me to do it, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, Favorite website can't be YouTube. Oh, um, go to a whole lot of other places. I don't, I don't consume a lot. Um, I really don't. So like I have, you know, apps on our phone have replaced websites in theory for a lot of stuff. It's true. Um, I guess Amazon, um, even though there's an app for that, if I'm, yeah. yeah, you know, Amazon's one of those things that love it or hate it. It's, it's become a dependable source to get what you need, especially, you know, when we couldn't go out places and go to stores. It's um, crazy. So I guess I Amazon depend on these things like at a yeah. button is nuts. Oh, my favorite. I should have said fishroomfever.com. But <laughs> <laughs> uh favorite celebrity crush. You trying to do me dirty on here. Well, it gets dirtier. Oh, <laughs> favorite celebrity crush. I'm gonna go with Kate Beckinsale. She's a she's an attractive woman with a, a wonderful, wonderful um Accents? Oh, accent. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> oh, accent. I said accent. And you say accent. Oh, no. Accent. <laughs> accent. Um, uh, there's something about the accents that gets me, you know, so. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. All right. And that's what Mrs. Fever won't get mad at me about either. So there you go. Okay. That works. That works. Um, she'll probably get mad at these next few questions later, though. Um, favorite ice cream flavor. Chocolate chip cookie dough. Just the raw cookie dough and vanilla ice cream? Yeah, let's do it. it used to be one of my faves for a while, too. Did you ever used to eat the cookie dough straight out the thing? I mean, who didn't? Who didn't? <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, that's that's one of the things I worry about with my kids nowadays. We We used to live such a fun, free lifestyle growing up, and now it's like, can't do any of these things. No, no, no. Next. It's dangerous. I'm like, if it was so dangerous, how come so many of us made it through it? 
Yeah, I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. Favorite car? Oh, I mean, I'm going to go with my car on this one. That sounds bad, but it was a car that um, actually looked for. Uh, so I've got a 2008 Dodge Magnum with the Hemi in it, V8, 5.7 liter. Um, it's it's decked out, you know, everything from having the heads redone to long tube headers. Um, it's It's been tuned and it, it rips and roars and it's ready to go. Awesome. I wanted that Hemi motor. I didn't like the Chargers when they first came back out. Uh, the Challenger being a two door was kind of a no go with with kids and family and stuff on the horizon. And I saw it in a movie. Um, I saw him peeling out in this Dodge, Dodge Magnum at the end of a movie. They're picking a dude up out of prison, and I saw that Hemi emblem on the side of it. And I was like, "What? What is that car? Let me look into that." So it's it's a station wagon. It's just a good old you know station wagon, but it's it, it runs. So okay, all right. Got a couple of other people that Chevy Chevelle 68. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful 69. car. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mine is a uh, 77 Pontiac Trans Am. Very nice. Very nice. Well, see, uh, mine also has some forward thought into it. Uh, I got the very last year they made them in a color that no longer exists. Uh, according to uh, Fiat Chrysler Associate or whatever, the FCA, their records, um, they made 10 like it. They pulled it and they made 10 like it. So it's one of those cars that, you know, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, it's you're not going to see another one, you know. Wow. Uh, and that's the goal is to, to maintain it, hold on to it, keep it restored, get it fully restored, and then pass that on to the kids. So they've got their own version of, you know, a 69 Chevelle. It's like, oh, that's a that's an 08 Magnum from 40 years ago. There's There are only two others left in existence now, you know. I used to want a, a night rider car like Kit. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wanted it to talk to me and everything. Have the beam light going across it. Oh my that God. would be awesome. Just give me a DeLorean, man. you know. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah. But I could hear the music. Dun it, dun it, dun it, dun it, dun it, dun it, dun it. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, man. Favorite superhero. Mm. So Oh, it's going to have to be Captain America. Captain America. It was Iron Man for a while. Okay. It's a um, well, well, here's the thing. <laughs> if I tell you this, you'll never look at Iron Man the same way. So I don't know if you want me to tell you this or not. Tell me because he's not my biggest fan, but let's see. So so Iron Man, he kind of became my, my my guy when he did the, you know, I am Iron Man and he, he saved the universe. Um, but when you look at that and you actually think real life perspective, um, when he did that, he actually became the villain. Because what he did, and, and if you do the research, he brought everybody back to the exact point in time that they were when they disappeared. So you've got people that were in airplanes that were brought back and fell straight out of the sky and hit the ground. I mean, you've got people that were brought back standing in the middle of the highway that done, you know. Oh, so is he really the hero or is he the villain? So that's that's why I went back to my boy Cap. It took a lot of persuasion to get me on Iron Man. And in the end of that, when he does, I was like, yeah, I, I got to go Iron Man. But I know I had to go back to my boy Captain America. Stars and Stripes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. Very interesting take on the Iron Man. Yeah. Okay. Um, favorite sport? Um, I'm not really a sports guy. I'm really not. Um, hey, I guess in this day and age, I could say professional gaming, right? You really can. Actually. <laughs> I mean, That's you know, so crazy that you can say that. I even think I, I, I think they were trying to do an after-school club for it, and maybe consider turning it into a class. Hey, there you go. That's interesting. I would definitely like to get paid to teach gaming. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Um, favorite emoji. It's got to be the the little winky eye stick the tongue out emoji, because I, I like to talk people and tease people all the time, and Mrs. Fever gets it a lot because I give her a lot of grief. <laughs> uh, I, I give her a hard time. Y'all know how my my personality is and um, my sense of humor, so. Hulk snap people's back. <laughs> <laughs> Arcia, 
the five dollar super sticker. Thank you, thank, 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 thank you so much. Thank you. It's appreciated. Uh, favorite emoji. The one I just told you. You did tell me that, didn't you? I'm, yeah, I, I had to get. I had to give you a hard time, Biz. You got me. Very good. Very good. Doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes it happens. And when it does happen, it's freaking sweet for the other person. <laughs> favorite game console. Uh, it's going to be the Xbox. I'm going to get some hate for that, but um, I've got Xbox One, um, and I do enjoy it. Uh, I'm not on the PlayStation side of things. It's one of those great debates, you know, kind of like Android. Oh, see, see, mm-hmm. there you go. There you go. Got to love it. But, yeah, I've got um, boys, so if I can't play one, i got to play the other. Now, I uh, you know, I'll... One and- my my laptop can do gaming because you know everybody always talks trash on the console gamers. The computer gamers do. You get Bob Steenfont in here. He'll be oh you you console gamers. <laughs> I can't get the thing to run like you know everybody says it should. You know oh it's great and it's so quick and I'm like no I'm just gonna go hit up the Xbox. I'll leave this for editing and all that stuff. I can't. I my my son can can get on the on the on the on the PC what's the CPU whatever the shit is called. And um, I, I got to stay on console. And he's like, it's so slow, Dad. You're so, I was like, I don't care. I can rock on this. I don't know what yeah. you're talking about because that just gives me. But you know what? The only thing I hate about the console, uh, I'm a big NBA 2K um, nice. player. And um, I get cussed out by like eight-year-olds and just called all kinds of names. Now, you know I'm an educator. But when I'm playing the game, right, I'm not in the classroom. I, I, uh, yep, I'm right there with you. I let those little mothers have it. Hey, man, who the you think you're talking to? <laughs> so here's, here's what I've done. Here's what I've done because it honestly becomes. Um, I've stopped playing a lot of games, and a friend told me they did this years ago, and I kind of like whatever, man. That's just weird. Um, my mental health couldn't take it anymore. Like it got to be so stressful when I was trying to relax and do some of these games. Sure. Um, so I just, I create a private party and then I don't have their audio. I can still listen to it. Cause you know, well, you got the headset where you can hear the guy walking, you know, a hundred meters away on the second floor. And I want all of that, but I don't want the eight year old, you know, blowing bubbles in his freaking chocolate milk and talking about how he's going to, you know, do this, that, and the other. Um, so, yeah, I, I do a lot of a lot of private parties, so I don't have to deal with that anymore. Just because it, um, I, I do it for enjoyment. Um, so I don't, I don't suck, Danny Weshy. I'm actually very good. I have my guy. He's good. They will not pass the ball because they're just they don't know basketball. We got kid, we got keep. They don't know basketball. I've coached basketball for ten years. I played basketball even longer. <laughs> They will not do the things they're supposed to do, and they don't have no idea. And then when they start sucking, they quit. <laughs> Why? What? The kids just quit, and they just start a new game. It's just yeah. I'm, it's a, I'm a, I just mute them now, just so I don't mm. just wild out. <laughs> you know, and a lot of it's for enjoyment with the the family. You know, I've got two little boys and Mrs. Fever. We're all gamers, um, so it's great to be able to to do those things as a family. Uh, and it also gives me some extended supervision, if you will, in terms of the kids. Because, like I so said, there are so many people out there, um, and not all of them are eight year olds. Um, it's a fact. So it keeps me in touch with their gaming life as well. So, sure. sure. I'm not with it. Oh, my God. I used to love Dreamcast. Every time I, somebody <laughs> puts it up, I love it. <laughs> Back I mean, in the day. In the Dreams, the first game that came out was, well, I, don't, I think that's the first one that came out with, because it's the first one I remember playing, but. That was an amazing game. The visuals on it just were off the chain. And it's it's so funny to go back nowadays and look at, you know, what was great graphics and great quality then versus now. And I try and tell people that, you know, 10 years from now, you know, you're looking at what we thought was great graphics today and it's probably not going to, or if you're not using, so what state of the art now is going to be, left in the dust then. So if you're using kind of mid grade now, you're gonna look back five years from now and go, oh that's grainy and that's nasty and sure. you know all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh favorite movie. 
it would have to be the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I think that's the the movie that I have seen more than any other movie on the planet. Lord um, of the Rings trilogy. Yeah. So the Lord of the Rings, Return of the King. Um, you know, Two Towers, Fellowship. Sure. Those three. Those three movies. Uh, that trilogy. Uh, I've watched an easy thousand times. Um, not the entire series a thousand times, but if you counted how many times each of those individual movies has been watched, um, I've watched that a lot. I've watched oh, that yeah. 80. I think I've done the same thing with Harry Potter, though. But yeah, I, I think part of the part of why I can't get into Harry Potter is because Mrs. Fever is such a huge Harry Potter nut. <laughs> um, it just, I, I just, I can't do it. I got to rebel. I just can't. <laughs> Hey, either you're all the way in or you're like, eh. Yeah, that's the thing is you, yeah, I, I like, I dip my toe in. I um, mean, it'd be kind of like somebody walking into a fish store that knows nothing about fish and then having Gary Lang throw two hours of scientific names at him. And they're just like, no, if I got to know all that, I'm out. Um, and that's kind of like me with Harry Potter. I'll go, oh, oh, I thought this was a neat little fact. And then I'll get a two hour lecture on how technically that's wrong. If you go off of the books and not the movies and how she's debating the author of this, in, this book that writes about Harry Potter for a living. And she's debating them on how they're wrong in their book um, on their take on this character's backstory. And I'm like, no, you're not the one to be messed with. I'm just going to stay out of that because if you're writing the authors and telling them they need to fix their books, I don't want to have that conversation. So, got it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, favorite school subject? Math, definitely math, hundred uh, percent. My mom was a math person. Um, I think that's that's part of why I enjoy it so much. Uh, I love math. Um, always been my favorite, and probably always will be my favorite. Most watched fish tuber. Ooh, um, me. I mean, fishy biz. I mean, um, so I don't watch a ton of fish tube currently. I try and catch what I can, but I don't. So like back when I was doing retail, um, I still wasn't really watching, but I had, you know, one earbud in doing my, my activities, my stocking, my, all that, you know, planning, mapping. Um, and I was constantly listening to fish to, while I was at work. And sometimes I was at work seven days a week from open to close overnights and all that stuff. So I, I consumed a lot more fish tube back then. Um, I would have to say, if I looked at the people that I have spent the most time watching or listening to, um, because that's how I mostly consume as I'm not watching, I'm listening. Um, it would either be John KG tropicals or Corey from aquarium co-op. Uh, I used to put on their stuff. I'd build playlists um, and I would just let it run. Uh, uh, and I mean like their old stuff back in the day. So like I started both of theirs um, from their day one. Like I went back all the way to the very first live stream that they had ever done and started watching from there and just letting it play hours upon hours of both of these guys. Um, so, yeah. That's real. Killers Aquatic. What's up, Bob? Right on, Kaylers. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Kaylor has jumped in here, and he's always been a mod of mine. And Bob's still, an awesome guy. Still jumping in modding. The B.O.B. is back, baby. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bob. Um. Favorite seafood? You know, shrimp. Red Lobster was your restaurant. What do you eat? There? Shrimp. It is shrimp. What do you like? It Scampi, is shrimp. Fried, butterflied. What do you do? I love it all. Um, so, <laughs> the, the first year and a half of my life, uh, my parents didn't actually own a home. They owned a shrimp boat. Um, so, I, I grew up on the shrimp boat. Like um, Forrest Gump, Bubba Yeah, like, like, like Bubba Gump. Shrimp. Shrimp Star Fry, <laughs> Shrimp Scampi, <laughs> Shrimp on a Stick. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they were commercial fishermen, you know, they were shrimpers. Um, I'm not a smart so, man, but I know where shrimp you know what, is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I, I grew up with actual, true, legit, fresh shrimp. Um, and that's one of the reasons I, I don't enjoy, um, I think Red Lobster kind of plays in that 
you know, closer to the coast that you get stuff fresh. Um, but fresh is my big thing. You can ask Ed on the trips we go on. If we get near the coast, that's like my one ask is, can we please go to some place that has real fresh seafood? Cause I only get to taste it when I leave Tennessee, you know, I'm landlocked now. Uh, but I grew up with being able to go down to the dock and get it straight off the boat, you know, that type of scenario. So spoil run. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. hundred percent. And then you make it however you want it. So sure. This was up. Um, favorite pizza toppings. Ooh. Um, so it, it's always been the meat lovers, but uh, Mrs. Fever's kind of got me on. She's more of the Supreme type. Uh, and they have this new like combination thing, at least here, where it's the meat lovers and the Supreme together. So you still get all the meats, but you get the mushrooms and the peppers and all that. Right. And I love all that stuff. Um, that too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if I had to pick just one, it would definitely be a meat, not pepperoni, but pick one of the actual like chunk meats that go on there. Gotcha. Pick one of those and go with it. I'm good. Pineapples on pizza. Yay or nay. You know, it's a mood thing for me. It really is. Like, I know that that's like one of those dividing things that a lot of people are like, yes or no, and I'm going to live or die by, you know, Android versus iPhone. Mm -hmm. um, but like on the pizza we were just talking about, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. um, the whole pineapple ham thing, that's kind of its own standalone. And sometimes, you know, I'll eat a piece or two of that. Yeah, it's called um, Hawaiian. I yeah. Yeah. yeah um, my only thing is, it always makes me want some nice, fresh, cold water, or not watermelon. Um, I do like watermelon. Pineapple, straight, you know, straight out of the fridge. I eat it, and I'm like, that pineapple just makes me want good it's pineapple. Like, that is real so, good. That pineapple is heavy in series. I love it. I love a cold. It has to be cold. It has yeah. to come straight out the fridge into my mouth. There we go. Nice, fresh. Well, guess what? You've just leveled up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Okay, Inferno round, fish room fever, and we've gone mm. over our time because we're so good at what we do. Um, that this is the lightning round, Inferno round. It's gonna go fast, provided right. you give us the right answers. But first, Pestotics. Thank you so much. For the super, I don't know what it is. Is it a super anything? It's a super chat with no text. Okay. Well, we'll take it. Thank you so much, Diego. You're awesome for Pistotics. Pistotics.com for all your fishy needs. Absolutely. All right. Welcome to the Inferno level. Here we go. Fish room fever. Right. Away we go. This is either this or it's either that. It's one or the other. All right. Here we go. Hot or cold? Cold. Bath or shower? Shower. Soap or gel? Gel. Towel dry or air dry? Towel. All right. Short or tall? Short. Goldfish or better? Better. Better or killy? Better. Better or tetra? Tetra. Tetra or pleco? Pleco. Gotcha. <laughs> Yeah. Or alligator gar alligator gar okay mammals or reptiles mammals starburst or skittles oh pink starburst the pink starburst very specific pink starburst or laffy taffy still the starburst all right pink starburst or gummy bears let's do gummy bears ah, gummy bears yeah. or gummy worms worms Mmm, we rolling now. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Eminem's or Reese's? Uh, Reese's. All right. And those are pieces or buttercups? Well, I was about to ask you, either one. Um, Let's do buttercups. Let's do All the right. cups. All right. Uh, Reese's Pieces, buttercups, or Snicker Bar? Still the buttercups, the peanut butter cups. Buttercups or Payday? Buttercups. Buttercups or Heath Bar? You're not going to get me off the Buttercups. Buttercups are Butterfinger. It's still Buttercups. Ah. 20, 
20 years ago, Butterfinger was my thing. Uh, but then, you know, I, I had teeth issues and now I've got dentures and like eating a Butterfinger, like that stuff just wants to stick in every single crevice. It's, I mean, you got to take a chisel, forget a, a toothbrush to get that stuff out of there. So, yeah. It's a fact. Okay. All right. Chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. A, a great movie or a great show? I like a great show. I like that long-term immersion. Mm-hmm. Um, tacos or burgers? Tacos. Bacon or sausage? Sausage. Sausage or ham? Smoked or city or country or no. Um, let's stick with sausage. I like sausage. (laughs) It reminded me the other day I was in Waffle House and, uh, they said ham and she's like popping off all these different types. They're like, ham. Where was this at? Uh, Waffle House. Oh my God. I love the Waffle House. Yeah. Oh, God, the wife hates Waffle House. I'm so glad that she hates it because I can go by myself and just go crazy. Unfortunately, all the kids like it, so they got to go with. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but it's so cheap. They can have whatever you guys want. They got an all-star on there for seven bucks, like whatever. I should say, yeah, the all-star is, uh, is marked down seven bucks. I might have to go to your area. It's nine fifty here, and that's discounted down from twelve fifty. Yeah, no, it's at seven, yeah. Yeah. Um... Pigs or cows? Mm. Cows. Cows or horses? Horses. Horses or donkeys? Donkeys. Mm, very nice. We're talking about favorite food still, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> what part of the donkey are you eating? <laughs> uh, I had to. I had to go there, Biz. <laughs> I'm a talking donkey. <laughs> <laughs> You hear that, fool? <laughs> oh, my God. Look, I saw, you probably saw it on TikTok, where it was that dog barking, and it was a horse, and it was a donkey. And the dog's barking across the fence. The fence is electrocuted. The dog arr, arr, hits the fence. The horse takes off, and the dog, ah, ah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. <clears throat> yep. Hilarious. Uh, mornings or nights? Who nights? I'm not a morning person. Me either. Me either. And I yell at my son. He's four, and he I don't want to get up and go to school. That was me at eight, and my mom dragging me in the bathroom. So now I'm dragging him. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. My, mine is mine is the opposite though. Mine is not me. Mine is he can go to sleep at. 12.30 at night and be up at 5.30 in the morning and he has energy for three days and I'm like Dude, you didn't get that from me or your mom because we both like our sleep. You're seriously. crazy. I've never sl- I've never enjoyed sleep so much than in my olden age and it's just like how do you guys do it? You remember a 40 year old virgin when the, when the when the girl's boyfriend walked in there and he has the condom stuck everywhere he's snapping one off of his toe and he's like he looks at him he's like Dude, teach me. That's all I want to just tell my kid. Just give me your energy. Yes, exactly. <laughs> How do you do it? I can't. I can't. I was asleep until not long before I got on here with you. Man, you know, so. I, look, I was dang there trying to take a nap. I had to put battery in my freaking car. Um, breakfast for dinner or dinner for dinner? A oh, breakfast for dinner. Okay, I see your extensive breakfast. I would love to have that for dinner. That seems awesome. Yeah. Weekday or weekends? It's all the same anymore. I guess weekends. Oh, uh, yeah. I, uh, and you work for yourself now, so you get up mm. whenever. Uh, YouTube, TikTok. YouTube. YouTube shorts or TikTok? If we're looking at just shorts, it's going to be TikTok. Ah. But if we're looking at we had to keep one platform, it's going to be YouTube. For sure. Disney World or Universal? Oh, um, Disney, so I can get the kids there. I think the kids, every kid needs to go at least once. So, Disney or SeaWorld? See, now you're getting into philosophical questions here on on, on that. Uh, so, I'm going to stick with Disney, and we're not going to talk about why I didn't pick SeaWorld. <laughs> okay. 
it's not because of the movie Blackfish, is it? Uh, there, there's a lot that goes into it. Okay. All right. We'll, we, we'll, I'm yeah. going to give Stephen P. Thank you for the super sticker. Thank you so much. Thank you, Stephen P. Right on. Stephen P. with the rap that is played nonstop on the morning show. <laughs> yeah, like, all right. Let's see, we did SeaWorld. Uh, I, I'll scratch that one. Um, because I was gonna say Six Flags or the Aquarium, so that would probably go without saying. Um, mm -hmm. hot coffee or iced coffee? If I'm gonna drink coffee, hot coffee. Okay. Beach sand or mountaintops? Beach sand. Um, I grew up on the ocean. Give me that beach. Okay. Uh, a little later, super early. Uh, am I arriving? I I'm going to try and arrive super early. I'm probably going to be a little late, though. Probably going to be a little late. <laughs> it's probably sleeping. <laughs> Brains or body? I mean, I've got both, but I'm going to say brains. You have both of these, breasts or butt? Oh, see, <laughs> uh, we're, we're talking about KFC, right? KFC, I got to go with the uh, with the dark meat. Um, you go get me in trouble. She yeah. showed up at just the right time. <laughs> this is what these uh, questions are planned for. Exactly. You know, no, for your no, old lady I, to come in and be like, I heard you on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, no, I'm going to have to go with breasts. Okay. All right. We'll take it. We'll take it. Um, thongs or boy shorts? Boy shorts. Very nice. Uh, this robe. is what I prefer to wear, right? Yeah. Robe or negligee? <laughs> uh, well, the kids have kind of ruined that. So I guess the robe, because you know, <laughs> it's, it's more likely to happen. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Fish sticks or nuggets? Nuggets. All right. Uh, CVS or Walgreens? Walgreens. I used to work there. Okay. All right. Fries or tots? Tots. Okay. Buffy or Blade? Blade. Blade or Selena? It was Selena. Ah! You knew this. I, came back and still, I was like, you knew he this. is going yes. to pick Underworld all day on this one. 100%. <laughs> Uh, Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter? Mortal Kombat. Mm, Scorpion or Sub-Zero? Sub-Zero. Okay. All right. Uh, just for kicks, Ryu or Ken? No clue. You never played Street Fighter? Uh, probably back in the day, long before when dinosaurs roamed the earth, but Jeez. no clue. That sucks. Yeah. I'm Street Fighter all day. Sorry, sorry. Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Wars. Mm. That's a hard one. That's a hard <laughs> one. <laughs> uh, Mario or Luigi? Uh, Mario. Mario or Sonic? Mario. Mm. Okay. Sonic or Tails? Tails. Tails or Knuckles? Tails. All right. Dogs or cats? Um, so I would say dogs, but we have cats. So I'm kind of becoming a cat person. So Are cats, I guess. Really? Okay. Yeah. All right. Cats or kittens? Kittens. Hey, all you cats and kittens. <laughs> <laughs> tigers or lions? Ooh, tigers. Okay. Tigers or panthers? Jaguars. Mm. Yeah, I'll, I'll go panthers. I'll go panthers. Okay. All right. Lois Lane or Mary Jane? Mm. Lois Lane. Mermaids or fairies? Fairies. Okay. Uh, cash or credit? Cash. Plane, trains, or cars? Cars. All right, home cooked meal or go out. Uh, as long as Mrs. Fever's not cooking it, home cooked. 
All right, I'm with it. And guess what? You've leveled up. All right, this next one is fill it in. All right, I'll say a little piece, you fill it in. Here we go. My worst job ever was. McDonald's. And not because it was McDonald's, just because of that particular job. Sure. It's probably why all of my students work there. And when I come through the line, they say, hey, Mr. Clark, how you doing? And I'm like, if you knew I was coming through the line, why are there not any free fries or nuggets in my uh, bag? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Do you not like me? <laughs> uh, my first job ever was. Uh, so it was technically working for a very rich man out of Nashville as a property caretaker, groundskeeper. My, my first uh, official like company job would have been at Sears. My partner worked at Sears for a while. Um, by far the best vacation spot is Florida. Okay, the beach. Yeah, took the missus there and got spoiled on the white sands and the clear water. Went down to Gaveston for a family reunion, went to the beach there. She did not even want to get in the water <laughs> in Texas. She was like, uh-uh. Why is it so dirty? <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, man, we ain't drive 16 hours. But, hey, man, get in the water. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, name of my first fish was? I don't even know. I, I don't even know. So like my dad had fish growing up or when I was growing up, um, you know, we had fish in the house. And I couldn't even, I don't know. Any name you could think of? Did you name any of them? You know, I haven't really like through my adult fish keeping, I didn't really name a lot of fish until, you know, Mrs. Fever. And then she wants to name things. Um, so I guess, Big Frank is probably one of the first ones. Big Frank, Frank the Tank, <laughs> from old school. <laughs> I'm a Will, oh. I'm a Will Ferrell fan. Oh yeah, he, he does great stuff. <clears throat> uh, Gaveston Beach is like swimming in homestyle gravy. That goes <laughs> down in history. I love that. We're gonna turn that into a. Bunch. Oh yeah, no, Mrs. Fever got it. I figured she'd correct me. Uh, bats. It was a yellow tang ah, uh, that we had. Yes. Probably 10 years ago, 10, 11, 12 years ago. That's been Mrs. Fever in here the whole time. She was, did she hear me say the one thing? Because she said, You're fired. Oh, yeah, she, she's been giving me You're a hard time. Fired at Fish Room Fever. Yeah. Yes, success. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting on, on a wife to just get on somebody's butt on here. <laughs> I keep trying to say, Lisa, I got John on here. I'm about to ask him some. Very sketchy stuff. <laughs> oh, my God. If I wasn't keeping fish, I would be keeping. Uh, more Second Amendment related items. Okay. All right. Okay. We're in there. We're in there. We've got them ready. Mock loaded. We're good to go. Gotcha. That, that um, is money transfers. It's like money comes from here. It's going to fish. <laughs> Mrs. Fever says cats. She would be. She would be. See, you know, uh, we're, we're not going to get into the cat story. I held my ground for seven, eight years, and then I said, okay, one time, and then it was just cats. This, like the freaking Cats, the musical, just cats. Hey, man, Netflix told you don't F with cats, man. Yeah. <laughs> that was. A, did you watch that? That was a really good series. Crazy how people become detectives online. Like, that is nuts. Yeah. Nuts. Yeah, I've kept all my cat stories to myself because I am a hardcore dog fan. But after that, I was like, eh, yay, cats. <laughs> cat room fever. I love it. Mystery Snail Guardian. <laughs> oh, look, my internet just shut off. <laughs> <laughs> Star in any movie. 
Ooh, so I could go back and put myself in any movie? Yes, and star in any movie. Mm. Well, I'm going to take that exactly at face value for star in any movie, and that's going to be myself being myself in the bio biography about myself 20 years from now. Yeah, you would say some cryptic I, stuff. I would. Like <laughs> I would. No. All the no. movies in the world, you could have been Bruce Willis in Die Hard. You could have been. <laughs> no, I know. Actually, let me take that back. I want to I wanna be in um, Underworld. That way I can get in that scene with uh, Kate Beckinsale, you know? There it is. There we go. That, that I miss his fever. Yep, there you go. Yeah, I'm waiting on what she's about to say. I'm about to put that <laughs> up here. <laughs> All right. You've moved on to the community tab part of the show where I go to my community tabs and see what your percentages come out to. Which would you play first at an arcade? Ski ball, ping pong, pop a shot, air hockey, or go karts? Let me get on some go karts. I want to go fast. I want to go fast. Because go fast, you, mama. If you're not first, you're, you're last. last. And out of three yes. votes, forty-six percent people picked go karts. Coming in in a twenty-four percent second, ski ball. Okay, uh, which is more romantic: horse, a horse-drawn carriage ride, a yacht water trip, a helicopter ride, a tandem bicycle, or a limo ride? I feel like horse-drawn carriage out of that is going to take the, the community vote. It certainly did with 63 votes. Our 63% of the votes out of 86 votes, it was horse-drawn carriage ride. Although while you're trying to get people in trouble, I did see this really awesome thing I'd like to go to. It's a, a big event. It's a boobs, boats, and butts. Um, I think we could have some fun there. You know, I don't know about romantic, but yeah. you know that the whole boat aspect really made me so, think. Like a real interesting, you know, thing to go to. Uh, yeah. We pretty much have that every summer at Lake of the Ozarks all three months. Yeah, that, that's, yeah. <laughs> uh, which park would you rather go to? An amusement park, a water park, a skate park, or just a neighborhood park? My favorite's not on there. I want to go to the national park. Ah. I want to be out in nature. But if I have to pick one of those, a water park. Okay, 29% for water park, but 43% for the amusement park out of 90 Oh, yeah. Votes. Yeah. Uh, which would you rather do, driving range or gun range? Uh, you know gun range. There it is, 71% of it, 85 votes. What would you rather do on a date? Go axe throwing, go bow and arrow, or skeet shooting? Mm, a skeet shoot. Skeet shoot, 46%. Takes the cake on that one. Uh, kiss your pet in the mouth, yay or nay? No, I'm good without that. <laughs> I'm good without that. 70% of the people say hell no to the no, no, no. No, I like that. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's a good answer. <laughs> uh, best apex predator, lion, great white shark, Komodo dragon, alligator, alaconda. And shark. Great white shark is correct. 63% of the people chose that. Uh, which sauce at Taco Bell? The sauce. Which sauce? Mild, hot, fire, Diablo, or Diablo, or Verde? Uh, the one that's got the cutest little saying on it that I can give to Miss Fever when she's mad. <laughs> yeah, mild, mild. <laughs> mild wins with forty three percent. You're really good at this. Uh, best sauce for chicken nuggets. The best sauce. Sweet and sour. I, I, well, most people probably said barbecue. They did. But uh, Sweet and Sour came in second. No, Sweet and Sour came in third after Honey Mustard. 31% for barbecue, 36 for Honey Mustard, 23% for Sweet and Sour. See, I like Honey Mustard, but like McDonald's Honey Mustard, just it, it, it's not right for me. And that's what I think of when I think nuggets and sauce. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, I understand that. I understand that. Is it okay to pee in the shower? Absolutely or hell no, that's nasty. Yeah, I mean, it's water conservation is what it really is when it comes down to it. Okay, all right. A little 
little pee in the shower never hurt nobody. D- do it responsibly. Aim at the drain hole. Don't just like get it on the walls and you know it's on the side of the tub and be, be responsible I mean, with you, your pee. Yes, always, always shower your innate responsibly. You heard it here first. <laughs> the toilet paper does it go over or does it go under? It goes over. I mean, the patent has shown that that's that's proven. It goes over. High five on that one. I'm with you yeah. on that. Absolutely. I was hoping my hand wouldn't disappear into the green screen <laughs> trying to do that. Uh, which one? Tattoos or piercings? Uh, I mean, that's tough. That's tough. For me, it's tattoos. If we're talking about on the uh, opposing gender, I'm going to have to say piercings, although tattoos are awesome too. But. Okay. okay. Um, for pee in the shower, I forgot to tell you, 78% yes. Uh, for toilet paper, 85% over. And see, I, I'm a no, but y'all nasty. I just want to see how many nasty <laughs> Nasty mother! <laughs> <laughs> um, for tattoos, 85% over piercings. Yeah. You hit the lotto, give me the lump sum, or pay me weekly. Mm, I want the lump sum. I want the lump sum. That way I could invest it for my kids. That way, no shenanigans. Because even if you got a contract, things happen, you know, you can't you can't bet on it like you can what's in your hand, you know. That's a fact. Um, and 70% say lump sum. Which show would you like to be a guest on? Family Feud, Price is Right, Jeopardy, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, or Wheel of Fortune? Let me get on Jeopardy. The least with 7%. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, well, people don't want to have to answer questions, but I enjoy yeah. that. Especially no. turbo nerd questions. No, most people probably said millionaire because they heard millionaire. They're like, I want that money. Ah, the no. Family Feud. Was that okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I would definitely do Family Feud before anything. I would I, I would do it. Yeah, just like from a fun perspective. Sure. Absolutely. That, that would be fun. Give Steve Harvey a hard time. Give him some, some crazy answers. Oh, my God. It'd be hilarious. Uh, which would you rather receive, a call or a text? A text. I don't even have my voicemail set up after nine years with the same number. Yep. You and 72% of people. Um, do you sleep with a lamp, a nightlight, TV on, or I need total darkness? Uh, so, anymore, I sleep with darkness, typically. Um, sometimes some some light from, like, the kids needing light in the house or whatever sure. used to be, I had to have a TV on, um, but give me a fan and let me turn on a YouTube video. I can turn the light off on the screen and I can do darkness. So there it is. There it is. Super chat from Garcia. Hey, hey. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, I had something here for you. I'm not sure what happened. <laughs> Technology. Thank you Absolutely. so much. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. And we are back at it. Uh, just a few more here. And uh, so you said that night, like, uh, uh, Godzilla or King Kong? King Kong. At 48%, 52 for Godzilla. Uh, and which one would you like to turn into on a full moon? Werewolf, Werepanther, Vampire, Succubus, Shapeshifter, Fairy slash Leprechaun, or Witch slash Wiccan? Oh, I don't want to be a Leprechaun, but I like the Fairy option there. Okay. Fourteen percent, twenty-six one or thirty-three percent says shape shifter. Favorite black and white show: Leave It to Beaver, I Love Lucy, Andy Griffith, Perry Mason, or the Beverly Hillbillies. I can't even answer that because you left my show off. This interview's done. <laughs> What's your show? Mash. Mash is my show. Oh, I forgot about Mash. But Mash turned into color Mash. after a while. Well, so did Andy Griffith. It. It. it yeah. But um, what, what were you just again? I was so busy listening for Mash, I didn't even pay attention for the. For, <laughs> yeah. Mash is fun, and thirty-five percent picked Beverly Hillbillies. I okay. probably would have picked Leave It to Beaver. Yeah. yeah. 
Favorite stooge, Larry Murley, Larry, Mo, Curly, Shemp, or Joe? I know Mo. I think Mo's got it on this one. No. You know no. everybody love Curly. Certainly. All right, which are the better two? Simpsons and American Dad? Rick and Morty and Family Guy? Simpsons and Family Guy, American Dad, Rick and Morty, or Robot Chicken, Futurama. Where the heck is Scooby Doo and like all, all the all the things I'm looking for here? What are you talking about? Scooby Doo, they're not on Adult Swim. Adult Swim, I don't want anybody to watch Adult Swim. Um, give me the Simpsons. I mean Simpsons. Simpsons and what? They got Simpsons and American Dad or Simpsons and Family Guy? Uh, family Guy. 49% pick Simpsons and Family Guy. There you go. On an accidental win. <laughs> uh, which would you rather go to? The California beaches or the Florida beaches? Oh, Florida beaches. Florida beaches. Okay. 61% for Florida. Uh, for the meat eaters only, would you rather a ribeye or a T-bone? Ribeye. 70% agree. Um, who's the boss or Charles in charge? What? Uh, who's the boss? <laughs> Seventy-eight percent on that one. Uh, the Munsters or the Adams Family? Oh, I'm gonna have to go with the Munsters on that one, though. The Adams Family might have taken it. Yeah, they did. Sixty-four percent Munsters for thirty-six, but the Munsters yeah. were excellent. And last, what's your favorite part of fish keeping? The fish, the aquascaping, the fish community, the responsibility of keeping life, or the convention shows, auctions, and swamps? I'm going to have to say community because the convention shows, auctions, and swaps are great, but it's because of the community that they're great. Um, I don't really enjoy them that much without that aspect. So, well, I tell you what, you've been a hell of a hell of a guest here, man. Thank you, sir. And that is it. You've made it through the hot spot, people. Oh, put your fine. ones in the chat for Fish Room Fever, please. Put your ones in the chat for a great interview. Making it through the hot spot. He did a great job. Answered all the questions. We had a lot of fun ourselves just talking back and forth. I really appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. Oh, I appreciate you having me on. It's been a fun time. <laughs> Oh, uh, Mrs. Fish Room Fever, you can now have him back for the evening. Sorry to have taken so much time. <laughs> uh, what does he enjoy most about the hobby? So, I mean, if it wasn't, if we took the whole community, YouTube didn't know all this existed. It was just me keeping fish in my house. Um, it really, it would just have to be about the the behavior and the personality of fish. I'm looking over here at the x -Dons. I know it's green screen, you can't see it. Um, but I really just enjoy watching how all the fish act independently and then in their own little groups and how those interact with others and just watching how they interact with their environment. Just enjoyable. That's awesome, man. And Miss Fever says, you can keep them, I'll just keep yeah. them. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, I'm looking at my African cichlids right now. They've been doing some wild stuff since I put a uh, I just put a, a power head in there. Um, okay. Wave, wave runner. So, like, they've been kicking it a little bit and been stirring up the pot and stirring up the dirt and the sand and all of that. And I'm really liking my 60 gallon I put together with angels and red eye tetras and oh, yeah. blue acars and serpes and a thread fin and Bolivian ram, Colombiana red. Beautiful tank, man! I love it, man. It, it it has the most life in it, and I'm just really digging it. And I, you know, I don't really keep smaller fish. I, I'm really a more mid sized cichlid guy, but having a busy tank like that makes it all worth it, man. It's, it's fun to see. Yes, and that's a great mix you've got there. I think what else I can put in there, man. There's still some room in there. I'm, I've got some Anubis growing, so 
gonna put some more Anubis, Anubius growing. Now I'm gonna put some more stuff in there. So it's the fun part for me is just figuring it out. You know, once you get to learn yeah. these different fish and what could go together and what has the possibility of going together, or even keeping some fish, and that's like my like a goal for me is to keep some stuff that no one else has ever been able to keep, and I can keep it. Heck yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's it. Listen, everybody, I see the ones have come in the chat for Fish Room Fever. Thank you all for coming on through for the evening. All the mods, thank you for helping me out so much. Um, we really appreciate you. This has Absolutely. been a great stream. We've went longer. I think this is the longest that I've gone in a while, um, maybe even period. And You know uh, I talk. <laughs> man, it's, 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 it's a good camaraderie, man. We just have, a, Absolutely. We just have that, got that kind of swag, man. I enjoy it very much. <laughs> we appreciate you all. Thank everybody for all of the super chats, all of the super stickers, and just being here, you all. Um, come on back next week, man. I'll have somebody else in the hot spot. All right. I think uh, those, Shaquille O'Neal. There you go. As I say, those of you that follow over from my community post, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button from a boy Fishy Biz there. Right on. Appreciate it. All right, you guys. And we are going to get out of here uh, anything else fever you're good uh check out aquaticon 2022 coming to knoxville tennessee it's going to be a huge show uh you can look us up on facebook uh there's a youtube channel that's made that we're going to get some stuff out on that would be my big thing um it's going to be awesome it's going to be a blast we've got some big names that are going to be headlining so when is it uh it's going to be april 30th in 2022 so not too many months away um but it's, it's going to be fun. That. Tennessee's nothing but four. And then maybe trying to, well, Memphis is four for me. But probably getting to you might be, um, what, another hour or so? Yeah, yeah, probably hour and a half, two hours. I'll do um, it. But yeah, I mean, we've got uh, over 400 people on the Facebook page that have already said they're either going or interested. Uh, and we just released the Facebook page like two weeks ago. So it's going to be big. I love it. Sounds good. All right, you guys, and that'll take us out. Always remember, the best stuff is the wet stuff, and we out. <laughs>